Baptize in your fire. Baptize his hands with your anointing. Baptize his hands with the glory of God. Baptize the hands with favor. In the name of Jesus. Lay that hand upon your head now. And let your voices roar like thunder as you pray like this. Every curse. A sign against my head. Backfire. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and command the curse of backfire. In the name of Jesus. Pokatala Karabo Sanda. Ribo le katende. That's right. Let your voices roll like thunder. In Jesus' name we pray. That person over there, I have a word from heaven to you. And the word is coming to you loud and clear. I don't know who you are. The Lord said I should tell you that although it is the desire of your enemy, insanity shall not be your lot. I fire back every arrow of the enemy by fire in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and fire it back. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, we thank you once again for a time like this. Accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Continue to lay your hands upon our lives. Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let's have a seat. God bless you. Mysterious battles, mysterious prayers. Mysterious battles, mysterious prayers. Can I hear all the sisters here saying that? How about the brothers? In Daniel chapter 2, the book of Daniel chapter 2, verse 22, gives us a very interesting summary about the whole of life itself. If you look at that scripture very deeply, Daniel 2.22. Are we there? If you are there, say yes. He said, he revealed the deep and secret things. He knoweth what is in the darkness. Also, the light dwelleth with him. He revealed the deep and secret things. So in life, there are certain things that are deep. There are certain things that are secret. There are certain things that are in darkness. It is only the Almighty that can reveal those deep and secret things. The book of Job tells us that man that is born of a woman is of few days and is full of trouble. The trouble can be deep. The trouble can can be secret. There are battles and there are battles. There are battles that may even confuse the prophets. There are battles that may mesmerize a person. There are battles that you look at and you could not understand why the battle is coming. There are battles that defy explanation. There are battles that when you've heard the story, you shake your head and say, I don't understand this. Why is this coming from? Just like that fellow that came here many years ago in three-piece suit. Very handsome gentleman. He had PhD in accounting. He was sitting over there waiting for me. Very strange, mysterious battle. The man looks normal, handsome, and very easy to talk to. He speaks British English. 
But once he sits down now, every now and then, he will slap himself in the head and he brings out a cockroach. Life. He will squeeze the cockroach. Pim! And throw it at the floor. So, if, he, if he's waiting for you for 15 minutes, by the time you come out to see him, you find dead cockroaches all over the floor. The day he came, all those who said they want to see Joe, they disappeared from his side. They could not understand the reign of cockroach in this man. Here yeah, was a man with a PhD now in accounting. Very handsome, has a car, has houses, but he has a mysterious battle to fight. Marriage. Marriage care. He's not talking about marriage. My sister, will you marry a man who would slap his head and bring out a cockroach? And on wedding day, he's wearing his suit and he's bringing that cockroach at the altar. Will you marry that kind of person? He came for prayers. The battle was mysterious, but God solved the battle. Now, there are plenty of people going through battles they don't understand, they cannot unravel, it's not clear. They try to master it, they cannot master it. Say, what kind of prayers can I pray? They don't even understand what prayers to pray. And sometimes when they go to their pastor in the church and they explain to the pastor, the pastor will say, ah, I, I, excuse me, I think you are running mad. I think you should go to the hospital. There was a lady, anytime she was menstruating, she would feel like eating sand. Unless she locks herself up in the room, she will eat sand. A mysterious battle. The day she went to tell her pastor, pastor of one of these uh, disco churches, that one said, no, 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 no. It's not possible. No. How can you eat sand? Go to the hospital. The hospital? My husband is a doctor. Mysterious battle. I pray. At anyone in this garden this morning, and the enemy has organized mystery around your battle, whether it is convenient for the enemy or not, whether it's convenient for household wickedness or not, whether they like it or not, you must be delivered. You must be delivered. You must be delivered. You must be delivered. In the name of Jesus. Amen. This is why there is no church like Mountain of Fire. All over the place now, they have converted the Mountain of Fire to an intensive care hospital. And many people have even converted this year, General of Asia to Fire Brigade from all kinds of churches all over the place. They don't like our dressing. They don't like the way we behave. But then when the mysterious battle comes, I become fire brigade. Listen. A mysterious battle is a secret battle. The enemy doesn't want you to know where it is coming from or how, how, how it is operated. A mysterious battle is a baffling battle. A mysterious battle is a cleverly concealed battle. A mysterious battle is a cryptic battle. It's cryptic. Sometimes it hides for years. Then one day like this it will manifest. And people say, what is this? What is this? What is this? A mysterious battle. Like I shared with you here some time ago, I wish I knew what I know now then. I would have been able to help. But that time, we are very ignorant. Ignoramus. Completely in our church. Don't know anything. Perhaps the only thing we're good at is singing songs and dancing. It was a wedding. And they were dancing. They danced outside. Now they wanted to take a picture with the bride and the bridegroom. So all of us left their side. All of a sudden, the woman screamed. Yeah! And she held her gun and toy it. Right there in our presence, we could see her underwears. She was running mad on her wedding day. What a mysterious battle. Nobody knew what to do. What they could do is just grab her apart from one woman, use the rapper to wrap her, and then quickly push her into a car, hospital. Uh, if it's now, I know what to do. Not then, I didn't know what to do. I pray for somebody here that any battle that wants to embarrass you, that wants to disgrace you, must backfire. 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 In the name of Jesus. A mysterious battle is a dark battle. You look at it, you can't understand it. 
It's a dark battle. How will you describe this? The mother of a person comes to his room in the morning and knocks the door. Co, 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 co. Say yes. Say it's me, your mother. Say, mommy, good morning. Say, well, I didn't ask you to greet me. I just, I just want to find out whether you are still alive. The boy kept quiet. Keeps quiet. Co, 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 co. Again in the morning. Hello? Morning? Say, good morning, mom. Say, I didn't say you should greet me. I just want to find out how far we have worked on your body tonight. What kind of a dark battle is this? Why didn't the woman abort the baby in the womb? Why did he give birth to this boy? The person has become an adult now and then the battle all of a sudden starts. Every dark battle facing anybody here, let the battle be scattered. Let your amen roar like thunder. Let it roar like thunder. What is a mysterious battle? It's a difficult battle. Difficult. As you are solving one, another one is coming up. As you are trying to resolve this one, that one is showing up. A mysterious battle is a hidden battle. It's hiding from you. That's why the Bible says, as soon as they hear of me, they shall obey me. Strangers shall submit themselves unto me. The strangers shall fade away and they shall run out of their close places. There is a close place that the strangers are hiding. They want to hide so you won't know who they are. This is why sometimes some prophets will confuse people. They show you your enemies as your friends. They show you your friends as your enemies. It is possible for the enemy to wear a disguise. And you won't know that is the enemy. The enemy can borrow the face of your friend, of the, those who love you, to come and attack you in the dream. And if you are not careful, you are not saying, look, you reveal your true identity. You will blame the wrong person. And then you, come, you get into more trouble. This is a serious matter when you are talking about mysterious battle. A mysterious battle is a perplexing battle. A person will be so perplexed. So what do I do? How do we handle this now? So perplexed. How do we handle this now? A perplexing battle. A mysterious battle is a strange battle. Strange battle that attacks people. A brother was to get a visa to travel abroad. Got admission. He got everything worked out. Got a scholarship. Everybody was happy for him. He got to the point of entry of the country he was going to. And he got there. He said, hello, how are you? What do you want to come and do in this country? He said, I am John the Baptist. Uh-uh. John the Baptist. John the Baptist is not in this passport. Are you Mr. John Baptist or Baptist John? Sir, I say I'm John the Baptist. I'm Father Kusan Jesus is Lord. Got mad right there at the place. Raise up your right hand. Every power assigned to embarrass my destiny. You are a liar. Duh! In the name of Jesus. There is somebody here who needs to pray this prayer. Master Takaya Boko Shendera Bakanta. Yes, I refuse to be embarrassed. In Jesus' name we pray. Mysterious battles. Mysterious prayers. A mysterious battle is an impenetrable battle. You can't penetrate to understand what is going on. A mysterious battle is an incomprehensible battle. Inexplicable. A mysterious battle is an unnatural battle. A mysterious battle is an evasive battle. It 
baffles understanding. Cannot be the explained. A mysterious battle is a bizarre battle. Bizarre battle. I know a family. They were going for a wedding. On the way to the wedding, their vehicle had an accident. Four people died, including the father and the mother of the bridegroom, dead. They finished the wedding. Bride and bridegroom left the venue. A trailer ran onto them. Bride and bridegroom dead. It, it's bizarre. It's ghostly. A mysterious battle is a deep battle. Arousing wonder and confounding in nature. The enemy brings mysterious battle to those who have flying destinies. We live in a mysterious world. Our world is full of so many mysteries and therefore with so many mysterious battles. The spiritual rule is this. It takes mysteries to tackle mysteries. You must live a mysterious life to overcome the mysterious circumstances of life. You must pray mysterious prayers too to overcome mysterious battles. That's why some of our prayers here are strange to the unlearned. They wonder what kind of prayer is this? Is because there is a mysterious battle going on and you need mysterious to confront the mysterious. This morning, we have work to do here and that's why we are here. This morning, we have to pray some mysterious prayers to, to confront mysterious battles. The psalmist prayed red hot prayers. Why? Because of the mysterious battle he's facing. You played instrument for somebody to recover from insanity, demon possession. The person that you are playing music to set free now wants to kill you. The same person gave you his daughter to marry and you were anointed as king. But the person, the person is still alive. So the psalmist knew that he had battles to fight. These are the situations. You can afford to dance away your Sunday and waste time in church if you have no issues to resolve. Many are still doing that every Sunday in their various churches now. Not knowing that there are cryptic battles hiding under their wrapper, under their trippy suit. Which we, at the fullness of time, just manifest. And by the time they begin to manifest, they start looking for help now. It was a sad day for some years back when they bundled a former Miss Nigeria from CMS bus stop to this place for prayer. She just got out of her car and ran mad. That's it. They bundled her here. What can the Miss Nigeria anointing do for her now? All the long chain, the lipstick, and the bangles, and all those things, what can they do now? Nothing. We have to start praying. That's what the Bible says. Beauty is vain because it goes away. The inner beauty is what the Bible desires. The inner power is what the Bible wants us to have. There are people here this morning, if they will pray these prayers, they will be surprised what will happen in their lives. An overseas evangelist came to Nigeria. A white man, he came to preach. He didn't understand why he was coming. A woman came to him for counseling. And the man said, man of God, I've been pregnant for seven years. The white man said, no, no. That's, that's not possible. It's not possible. He does not understand. Where he has, he has met himself. We have seen those kind of battles before. And after prayers, 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 the baby that has been taken to which car coven is returned to the womb. And I've seen cases when the baby was delivered, the set of teeth were complete. Mysterious battles. This morning. You need two things. You need to submit yourself under the power of God. Then you need to pray like a mad prophet. In the mysterious prayers we are going to be using to confront this mysterious battle. Rise up on your feet now. And all eyes closed. Rise up on your feet. All eyes closed. 
you are here this morning. <laughs> you have not just surrendered your life to Jesus. Do so right now. Because you can't pray any mysterious prayers if you are not a child of God. You have to make God your friend. Whatever you are. Say, Pastor, I want to surrender my life to Jesus. Just raise up your right hand where you are and say what I'm going to say after me. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you now. Lord Jesus, come into my life. Take control of my life. Jesus' name, amen. This morning, you pray until something happens. We want to tie your headgear tight well. If you will, remove it from your head and put it down. Get yourself ready. If that heart is going to disrupt you, remove the heart. This is not a day to joke or to play games. Especially since there are some cryptic battles hiding there. Waiting for the person's day of glory. Waiting for the person's days of testimony. Waiting for the person at the maternity home. Waiting for the wedding day. Waiting for that glorious day. We call them cryptic battles. You can never overpray. You can only underpray. And prayers never die. Prayers are never wasted. So don't keep quiet while others are receiving break with fire in your voice. We're going to start this mysterious prayers now. Arrows of confusion. Arise. Confuse yourself. And go back to your senders. Arrows of confusion. Arise. Confuse yourself. Go back to the sender. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and begin to decline. Already. Pastor Paula can tend to have a question to you about. Today is today. Just continue. Continue. Aha, aha, aha. In Jesus' name we pray. Someone is here. You have been having this strange movement in your body. It is a serpent injected into your life in the dream. But that serpent is dead now. Thank you, Jesus. I, someone there, you took an exam. You actually passed this examination. But the enemy went there and wrote failed. A reverse has taken place now. Say, angels of fire! Alive! Is that the loudest you can shout? Pursue my pursuer! In the name of Jesus! Yes, let them be pursued by the angels of fire. Masanta Katela Bashanta. Enough is enough. Angels of fire. Pursue my pursuers. In Jesus' name we pray. That person that you have been smelling death, you have been smelling hospitals. Right there where you are. The power of God is coming upon you. And the yoke of death and hell is broken. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Mysterious battles. Swallow divine poison and die in the name of Jesus. Yes, feed the battle with divine poison in the name of Jesus. Aha, aha. This is not a day to negotiate. Don't negotiate. Aha, 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 aha. Masepoko Tandarabokoya Boshenta. 
Rebo likatanda rabo sanda. In Jesus name we pray. I want you to put my foot in this place. Because of the massive, massive, massive. Ten persons here. The enemy has just been passing you from one problem to the other. Right there where you are. The power of God is coming upon you. And the yoke of the circular problem is broken now. That's number one. Number two. Number three. Number four. Number five. Number six, number seven, number eight, number nine. That's number ten. That's right. Yes, that's the power of God coming upon you. That's right. All the witchcraft sponsored pile, the witchcraft sponsored low spam count, they've all been cancelled now. That's right. An organ that has been cut off in somebody's body has grown back right now. <laughs> say this the way I'm going to say my own. Fire! Thunder! Lightning! Kill my affliction! Can I hear you saying that? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. In the name of Jesus, that's right. Bakase tinda kaya bo shende raba. Yes. Aha, 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 aha. Continue, continue. In Jesus' name we pray. This next prayer. You may feel strange, don't worry. You may feel dizzy, don't worry. You may not even be able to stand on your feet, don't worry. If you land on the floor, continue the prayer on the floor. Say, serpents and scorpions in my blood. Die! In the name of Jesus. That's right. Masakatenda yabo shenderaba. Bakatanda rabo sopola kayabo shenderaba. Rapo li katanda ka manakanda rabo sopola kaya boko shentera ba bakatende setende kaya bo shentera ba opu yama opu yama opu yama serpents are scorpions in my blood die yes die the one in the blood 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 the power of God in the name of Jesus move aha 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 masekatala kayaba mashendera boko sotonde kayaba yes 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 Yes, 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 yes. In Jesus' name we pray. Uh huh. That's right. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Say this the way I'm going to say, my own. If you're a woman, say spirit husband. If you're a man, say spirit wife. 
Spirit husband. Spirit parents. Spirit friends. Can I hear you shouting those three things? Let your voice roar like thunder. In the name of Jesus. That's right. Pakata Santa Yaboko Shenteraba. Aha, 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 aha. Continue, continue, continue. Yes, yes. In Jesus' name we pray. That spiritual wedding rings upon the fingers of that sister is being pulled off by the angels of the living God. Those hands are on fire. Uh-huh. There is someone here. I have a word to you from the Lord. Before next Sunday service, you shall have a catapulting promotion. Yeah. Every triangular power yeah. assigned to torment me. The Bible says he has given him a name which is above all the At the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. Of things in heaven, of things on earth, of things underneath the head. Triangular locations. Triangular powers. That's what we mean. In the heavens, on earth, in the waters. Underneath the earth. Triangular powers. The sun, the moon, and the stars. Triangular powers. Every triangular power assigned to torment me. You are a liar. In the name of Jesus. That's right. Makatenda Yaboshenteraba. Aha, 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 Basa takata kalekata. Ribola la kande sente yaba. In Jesus, then we pray. Caging my blessing. <laughs> Don't joke with that prayer. Can I hear you shouting it loud and clear? Release them by fire in the name of Jesus. Yes. Masekaya Boshenderaba. That's right. In Jesus' name we pray. So double destruction from heaven. Visit every covenant troubling my life. In the name of 
Jesus. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Jesus name we pray now one of the most important prayers we are going to pray on mysterious battle here this morning every hidden battle in my life can I hear your voice roaring like thunder you are a liar In the name of Jesus. Aha. Pata satali katonda ribo soponde ke ya bo shentera bo kopia open your mouth open your mouth the hidden warfare the hidden battles in Jesus name we pray take your Bibles now beloved while we please she remains standing on her feet. Psalm 118. We're going to read it together. Psalm 118. We're going to read it together. Are we ready? Let's go. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for his good, because his mercy endureth forever. Let Israel now see. That is mercy and honor forever. Let the house of Aaron now see that is mercy and honor forever. Let them now that fear the Lord see that is mercy and honor forever. I call upon the Lord in distress. The Lord answer me and set me in a large place. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear what command do unto me. The Lord take my path with them that help me. Therefore, shall I see my desire upon them that eat me. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in prisons. All nations compass me about, but in the name of the Lord will I destroy. Read it again. Verse 11, they compass me about, yea, they compass me about, but in the name of the Lord, I will destroy them. They compass me about like bees, they are quenched as a fire of tongues, for in the name of the Lord, I will destroy them. Thou hast trust so at me, that I might fall, but the Lord help me. The Lord is my strength and son, and become my salvation. The voice of rejoicing and salvation is the tabernacles of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord dwelt valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord dwelt valiantly. I shall not die but live and declare the words. Read that again. Read it again like thunder. I shall not die but live. Shout it again like thunder. The Lord has chasing me so, but he has not given me over unto death. Open to me the gates of righteousness. I will go into them and I will praise the Lord. The gate of the Lord into which the righteous shall enter. I will praise thee, for thou hast had me and have become my salvation. The stone which the builders is become the edge of the corner. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our hands. 
This is the day which the Lord had made. We will rejoice and be glad in you. Save now, I beseech thee, O Lord. O Lord, I beseech thee, send now prosperity. Blessed be he that cometh in the name of the Lord. We have blessed you out of the house of the Lord. God is the Lord, who shall show us light. Bind the sacrifice with cords, even unto the horns of the altar. Thou art my God, I will praise thee. Thou art my God, I will exalt thee. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy and daughter forever. Amen. With your Bible still in your hand, decree this like thunder. Say, so every promise in this scripture, I claim it by fire in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and claim it by fire. Maseka tenda yabo shende raba. I claim it by fire. In Jesus' name we pray. Now stretch your Bible to the heavens like this. Say, I declare by the word of God that I shall not die but live to declare the works of God in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and declare it. As you stretch forward the word of the Lord in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's have a seat. God bless you. Exodus chapter 23. That's where we're taking our message from. Exodus 23 verse 22. Exodus 23 verse 22. I want all of us to open there. That is where we're picking our message from, and that is the point where all our prayers this morning will be focused. Exodus 23, verse 22. Let's read together. But if thou shalt indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy unto thy enemies and an adversary unto thy adversary. Can you read it again? Say, O oh God, arise. Be an enemy to my enemies. Can I hear somebody shouting that loud and clear? Aha. Let your voice roar like thunder. That is our message. Keep that scripture at the back of your mind. In Acts of Apostles, chapter 9. Acts 9. I begin to read from verse 1. Acts chapter 9 from verse 1. And Saul, yet breathing out threatening and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus to the synagogues. That if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus. As he journeyed, he came near Damascus. There was a crop of disciples in Damascus who were praying effective prayers. There were sharp shooting prayer warriors in Damascus who were already waiting. Saul had besieged so many cities, captured Christians, taking them away. But the day he decided to confront the disciples at Damascus, he had beaten more than he could chew. What happened? And suddenly there shined around him a light from heaven, and he fell to the earth. So shall your enemies fall. And he had a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me. It was the body of Christ who was persecuting on earth. But Jesus in heaven took it as a personal battle. 
So it's me you are fighting. He says, Saul, it's me you are fighting. It's not they, it's me. And nobody fights against God and wins. So it is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. Verse 5. And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what would thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. And the men which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice but seeing no man. And Saul arose from the earth, and when his eyes were open, he saw no man. But they led him by the hand and brought him unto Damascus. And he was there three days without sight, neither did eat nor drink. And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And to him said the Lord in the vision, Ananias. And he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. Shows you the quality of the disciples that were inside Damascus. Oh God, arise. Be an enemy to my enemies. Can I hear you roaring like thunder? Say it again loud and clear. It is a dangerous thing to confront a true child of God. It is a dangerous thing to confront someone who is serving the God who calls himself the mighty terrible one. It is a dangerous thing to confront the God who calls himself the consuming fire. Those who have confronted the children of the Almighty in the past, they have had themselves to blame. Those who have done so, they have had cause to regret. Some did not even have time to regret because the Almighty just wiped them away from the surface of the earth. Those who have done so in the past, confronting true children of God, they have been given a red card to depart into the land of forgetfulness. Those who are confronted, who have confronted true children of God in the past, they have been forced to bow down to those they despised. I pray that anyone despising you shall bow down to you in the name of Jesus. Those who are confronted true children of God in the past, they have had voices that drove them mad. Such people, such powers, they have risen and fought against themselves. Such powers, they have been rendered blind and confused. Such powers, in some cases, have been buried alive. Been buried alive. Such powers, in some cases, they have had evil angels pursuing them. Because they have made the mistake of confronting a true child of God. It is not in vain that the Almighty says, I will be a edge of fire around you. And you shall be the apple of my eye. How can you go and put your finger in the eyes of God? Those who have tried it before to be confronted true children of God, they have been given permanent residence in the valley of defeat. In some cases, angels have slapped them and worms came upon their bodies. Such people have been disgraced openly before and they confessed with their witchcraft until their bowels came out. I've seen it before. Many of such powers who are confronting the children of God have been cut off from the land of the living. Many have been buried alive in watery graves. Many have been forced to a shameful retreat. Many have been scattered unto desolation. Those confronting true children of God. Once an enemy is unrepentant and stubborn, there is no point in playing with them because you are wasting your time. About 40 men came together and they took an oath that they would not eat or drink until they killed Paul. When you are confronted with an enemy like that, then there is no point in being merciful. Then you will be more merciful even than the Bible. This is a very, very serious matter. That worry proverb, it says, the idol where they collect blood from you. You know, go take palm oil, even though they be the same color. So, any power that is bent on drinking your blood, it's not the kind of thing you play around with. This is a very serious matter. Such powers who have confronted children of God in the past have received courier letters from heaven to depart to the valley of destruction. 
Such powers have received arrows that torment them day and night. Such powers have chosen the part of endless harassment by the angels of God. I know one or two witches now who are in the psychiatric hospital because they attacked a child of God and an angel of God smote them on the head during the attack. The drugs there will not help them because they were disciplined by an angel of the living God. The Lord shall discipline all your enemies. He shall discipline them. He shall discipline them. He shall discipline them. He shall discipline them. In the name of Jesus, light your heaven, roar like thunder. Such powers who have confronted true children of God, they have eaten their flesh and drunk their own blood before. Such powers have been skinned alive and thrown into physical dungeon. Such powers have been converted to animals to partner with beasts. Nebuchadnezzar was an example. God sent him into the forest to go and live like an animal. A whole king in the palace became an animal thrown into the bush. Thrown into the bush to, to roam around like an animal. One day, the chiefs entered the palace. Others entered the palace. And the king was sitting on his throne. And I said, oh king, live long. Good morning, king. And he said of the king to say, good morning. Sir, what's going on here? Meow! And he crawled on all four into the bush. It is a dangerous thing to confront a true child of God. Very, very dangerous. It's a dangerous thing to confront any member of the Mantle of Fire and Miracles Ministry. But such powers will just be ground to powder. <laughs> you don't understand. It's not, even, it's not a prayer. It's a covenant of mountain of fire. Confront a true member of mountain of fire, miracles ministry, be ground to powder. Whether you are a native doctor is irrelevant. Whether your father is the head of all masquerade is irrelevant. There is somebody here. The stubborn which is harassing your career and your business shall be ground to powder. 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 In the name of Jesus. Such powers confronting the children of God have had their power base cut off. They issue their normal incantation. Nothing happened. Talk, talk, talk. Nothing happened. Such powers have had invisible whistle turning them to mad dogs. Such powers like Goliath, they have received hole in their forehead. I pray that before you leave this place today, your prayer stone shall locate the forehead of your Goliath. He shall locate it. 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 In the name of Jesus. Such powers have become the victim of their own weapons of war. I'm telling you what I've seen. Such powers have smashed their own faces in their own mirror of darkness. They were calling the names of the children of God in their mirror and they ended up smashing their own faces in the mirror. Some years back, one man was so angry that his wife was coming to Mountain of Fire. So what did he do? He gathered plenty of candles, lighted the candles, black candle, red candle, all kinds of colors. And he sat inside. He invited one prophet, prophet in court, to come and help. And what name were they calling there? They made a mistake. They were calling my name. Terrible mistake. They were calling the name. They were calling my name. They were calling my name. All of a sudden, the fires in the different candles, the fire joined together. They could not understand it. They jumped over the fire and ran away. The next time I will see the fellow, he was black, black, he was a black man. When I will see him the other, next time, his skin had changed. His fire had burnt him. I pray that anybody lighting evil fire for you shall jump inside the fire. Shall jump inside the fire. Shall jump inside. Shall jump inside. Shall jump inside. Shall jump inside. In the name of Jesus, light your amen roar like thunder. Such powers, they have 
been forced to wear their own garment of sorrow which they are sowing for children of God. Such powers, they've chosen to cast their lots with those who live for nothing. Such powers, they have been forced to carry their own load of wickedness. Such powers have had heavens throwing stones at them. Such powers have become permanent candidates of closed heavens anywhere they go. Such powers have received confusion of faith and having slippery ways. When the Bible says, let their ways be slippery, let them have no rest day and night. Such powers have had their idols that they trust so much turning against them. Such powers, they've lost their wealth and benefits to children of God. No wonder. The Bible says, it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the Almighty. It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the Almighty. I've shared this testimony before. Let me share it again for the sake of this morning. It was at Palm of Changes many years back. We have already closed. We have even shared the grace. I think so. Before we shouted hallelujah, there was a word. There is a lady here. The powers of your household that do not want you to marry. If they don't release you, all of them can die within 24 hours. That was the word. There was a lady there. I think she was 40 something, I forgot you now. She had a house via three or four cars. Nobody was saying anything to her, no marriage. 42, I think so. She was still a virgin. She got home from Palmer's Changes and prepared a tea to break her fast. Immediately she took up the tea, put the tea in her mouth. Her phone rang. She took up the call. Said, Hello. I just want to tell you that your auntie just died. Oh, she started crying. Because she lived with this auntie for a long time. She started crying and couldn't drink her tea again. All of a sudden, the phone rang again. She took the phone. She said, hello, is that you? Just want to inform you, your uncle just died now. She wanted to continue the crying. <laughs> but then she remembered the word of knowledge. Oh, she now took her tea and drank it properly. By the time she put down the cup, the phone rang again. A third person was dead. In two months, she was married. I pray, anyone here, that certain enemies have decided that you will not achieve certain good things, those enemies shall die. Let your amen roar like thunder. Like thunder. No wonder the Bible says the Lord is a consuming fire. When God becomes an enemy to your enemies, God comes in, takes up the quarrel personally. He will take it up personally. Personal. It is personal now. Just like he took the case of Saul personally. He said, Saul! Saul! Why persecutest thou me? He said, Who art thou, Lord? Say, I'm Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It's a hard thing for thee to kick against tongues. When God becomes enemy to your enemies, he comes in, he takes up the quarrel personally and will cause the enemy to be disgraced on the battlefield. God tells the enemy, so this quarrel, this fight, will not be between you and this man or this woman. It will be between you and I. When God becomes the enemy to your enemies. God will use you like Lazarus to advertise his power. In John chapter 11 verse 9 John chapter 11 let's read from verse 1 now a certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bethany the town of Mary and her sister Martha it was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore, his sister sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. Jesus did not go there until four days after. 
Four days after was then that he went. And there he used the man Lazarus to advertise his power. Can you raise up your right hand? He said, my father, advertise your power in my life. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and pray that prayer for yourself. Jesus name we pray now look at John chapter 12 look at what has happened to Lazarus in verse 9 John 12 9 much people of the Jews therefore knew that he was there they came not for Jesus they came not for Jesus sake only but that they might see Lazarus also whom he had raised from the dead. Lazarus, and not just Jesus, became a tourist attraction. Lazarus became a divine advertisement. I pray one more time that God will use you to advertise his power. <laughs> Lazarus became the attraction point. They wanted to see Lazarus. He became a divine phenomenon. Weeks before, Lazarus was the reason for sorrow, weeping, and pity. But now his story has changed. So shall your story change in the name of Jesus. So whoever you are and wherever you are today, it is never too late. Are you facing a situation that appears bleak? Or does your present circumstances appear beyond hope? Have you lost friends? Have you lost family members who have already grown tired of waiting for your deliverance? Everybody has prayed, they have cried, they have fasted, yet the situation is growing worse. The situation looks dead, twice buried, and the situation is now stinking. I have good news for such people. You are not alone. Mary and Martha, the sisters of Lazarus, had similar situations. Lazarus became sick and died and was now buried. He was placed in a grave and a stone was placed at the entrance. The situation appeared hopeless. To make matters worse, Lazarus' body had started to decompose. His blood had congealed. Jesus was well aware of Lazarus' death, but he waited for the mess to become big. The one who has the ability to make a change seemed to be silent. So Jesus went to this valley and spoke. First of all, quietly to his father. Quietly, father, thank you that you always answer my prayers. Thank you for all these people who are gathered here. And then he turned now to face the spirit of death and hell. At that level, all the Jesus, meek and gentle disappeared. All the gentility was put aside. All the, oh, I am a gentleman. I must behave like a gentleman. Disappeared. Turned to the tomb. Lazarus, come forth. That was it. And it was a good thing he mentioned only Lazarus. Because if he had said, come for everybody in that place will have pick race because all the dead people will come out. So whatever situation you have now is to bring you to a glorious end. God wants to prove to you that the harm of flesh will fail you. That it will do no good. That dead and stinking situation is to advertise his power and to expose the defeat of the enemy. So wherever you are, I have news for you. Your situation is far from over. And the enemy does not have the last say over your life. God must advertise his power in your life. What do you do to make God to become the enemy of your enemies? What do you do? Number one, total surrender. Total surrender. 
the Bible says, submit yourself under the power of the Almighty that he might exalt you in due time. Say, so then resist the devil, then he will flee from you. The first thing is submit yourself. Let God catch you first. After he has caught you in his trap, then your enemies are in trouble. But if God is catching you in his trap, you are putting one leg out, you are putting one hand out, it's difficult. Once he has caught you, then it's easy for him to catch your enemies. But if he has not succeeded in even capturing you yourself, you are not totally surrendered. You are still drinking. You are still smoking. You are still running around strange women. You are still a woman who pulled down your skirt at very small provocation. That means you are not totally surrendered. When he says submit yourself under the power of the Almighty, when you submit yourself, then it will exhort you in due time. After that, resist the enemy. Then the enemy will flee. That's the first point. Total surrender. When you say, I surrender all, meaning from your heart, you surrender all. Not I surrender some. You surrender all. Surrender your face, your dress, your prayer life, your handbag. That is, if we check those handbags now, everything in that handbag is born again. But if your handbag is not born again, you still have Jezebelian properties there to readjust and to transform when necessary. You have not surrendered yet. Total surrender. Submit yourself, he says. Then resist the enemy. Two, worry must die. Anxiety must be removed. If you worry, the Lord will not be able to fight for you. Three, you must be broken. They'll be teaching us here every morning on Sunday on brokenness. Four, Violent prayer. Five. Violent praises. That's how to make God an enemy to your enemy. You become his own friend first. Let him capture you. Surrender yourself in totality. Let him be able to boast that this person belongs to me. Then you are totally surrendered. You are totally surrendered to him. Then he can fight for you. Don't be like that white man who came to see me for prayers in one of our crusades abroad. I said, Mr. Man, are you born again? He said, man of God, I'm born again from my head to my waist. But from the waist down, I'm not born again. I said, you are not born again, sir. Don't be half, half like that. Don't be one leg in, one leg out. That will not allow God to fight your battles. Because someone say, oh God, arise and fight for me. Ah, huh? how you fight for you? But when me too, I needed somebody to fight for me. Where were you? When I needed somebody to work for me, where were you? When I needed you to evangelize, where did you go? When I needed you to lay a good example, did you lay it? Submit yourself under the power of the Almighty. Then worry must die. Worry will give you plenty to do, but it won't take you anywhere. You cannot change anything by worrying about them. And to even worsen the situation, 90% of what people worry about never happen. The Bible says, be careful for nothing. Three, it must be broken. Violent prayer, violent praises. This morning, we have prayers to pray here. And as you pray them, the hand of God will begin to move into various situations. Rise up on your feet now. Rise up on your feet. If you are here this morning, you are not born again. You have not just surrendered your life to Jesus. Wherever you are, while all eyes are closed, just raise up your right hand so I can pray with you. Those of you raising up your right hand, say what I'm going to say after me. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you now. Lord Jesus, come into my life. Take control of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Jesus. All eyes closed. These prayers we're going to pray. If your faith that, well, I hope it will happen, don't pray but if your faith is that as I am saying it in my mouth it is happening those are the people that should pray the Bible says without faith it is impossible to please God somebody is here the enemy fired an arrow at the back of your head and it's been causing you sleeplessness when prayer starts now it will appear if somebody wants to shift your head away and that demon shall go back to the senders Someone is here too. You have been harassed by the spirit of death and hell and there are powerful forces gathered against you. While this prayer is going on, those powers have been scattered. Someone is here too. You actually came here this morning with a very bad medical report. The Lord shall overrule that report this morning. 
There have been a chain. Terrible things happening in a particular family. As you pray this prayer, chains shall be broken. Yeah. How many sisters here this morning want dumbfounding testimonies? Let them say this after me loud and clear. Oh God, our Lord! In the thunder of your power. Can I hear the sister saying this? Show me a sign for good. Aha. Can I hear the sister saying it again? Can I hear the brothers roaring like thunder? Everybody together now. Aha. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and begin to pray like that. Show me a sign for good. Show me a sign. Show me a sign. Show me a sign for good. Show me a sign for good. Arise in the thunder of your power. Show me a sign for good. Bakatonde Kendia, Riboloko Sente Aboshende Raba. In Jesus' name we pray. Silence. The signs have arrived and they're taking it from person to person. Silence now. That's right. Someone is in this service. They have actually told you that you need a surgery where you are within the next few seconds. The power of God will fall upon you. And you may not be able to stand on your feet. Right there where you are, the angelic surgeons will begin their surgery upon your body. That's right. Yes, that's the power of God coming upon you. Thank you, Jesus. Say, so, oh God, Allah. And let those who hate me be put to shame. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and decree that I want you. That's right. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. This third prayer. Make sure nobody's voice overshadows your own. No, I beg you now. Say, witchcraft reinforcements. Witchcraft reenchantments. Witchcraft reinforcements. Witchcraft reenchantments. Sign against my life. Die! In the name of Jesus. The reinforcement and your enchantments. Masekara Bosontenda Kayaba. Aha, 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 aha. In the name of Jesus, move. Aha, something is happening here. Something is happening here. The reinforcement and the enchantment must be broken. Must be broken. In Jesus' name we pray. Wonderful. Every satanic court of appeal. Overturning my miracles. Can I hear you shouting this loud and clear? Is that the loudest your voice can go? 
Kata. In the name of Jesus. Scatter their court of appeal. Ria pole katende ke setende ke yaba. Aha, aha. In Jesus name we pray. Every power. Twisting my testimonies. Can I hear you shouting loud and clear? Twist. You are a liar. In the name of Jesus. Oh, put your mouth, oh, put your mouth. In Jesus' name we pray. This particular prayer, if you pray it and you lose your voice, it is worth it. My blessings. Hear the word of the Lord. Can I hear you roaring like thunder? Is that the loudest you can shout? It? Do not pass me by in the name of Jesus. They must not pass me by. Do not pass me by. In Jesus' name we pray. A louder amen. A Jericho destroying amen. Say this after me with a loud voice. Oh God. Raise a voice for me. Can I hear the sister saying it? Can I hear the brothers shouting the same thing loud and clear? Everybody together now. That is the title of our message. And that is going to be the concentration of our prayers here this evening. In 1 Samuel chapter 16, 1 Samuel chapter 16, I read from verse 15. You would do well to be very, very attentive to this message. 1 Samuel chapter 16, 15. 1 Samuel 16, 15. If you are there, say yes. And Saul's servant said unto him, Behold, an evil spirit from God troubled thee. Let our Lord now command thy servants, which are before thee, to seek out a man who is a cunning player on an harp. And it shall come to pass, when the evil spirit from God is upon thee, that he shall play with his hand, and thou shalt be well. Music deliverance. And Saul said unto his servants, Beloved, who was all talking to? Is what? Servants. He's talking to servants. Provide me now a man that can play well and bring him to me. Then answered one of the servants, a servant, and said, Behold, I have seen a son of Jesse the Bethlehemite that is cunning in playing. And a mighty valiant man, and a man of war, and prudent in matters, and a comely person. And the Lord is with him. 19. Wherefore Saul sent messengers unto Jesse, and said, Send me David thy son, that is with the sheep. Keep that scripture at the back of your mind. In Luke chapter 16, Luke chapter 16, verse 10. Luke chapter 16, verse 10. He that is faithful in that which is least 
is faithful also in much. He that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. If therefore ye have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to your trust the true riches? Listen to verse 12. And if you have not been faithful in that which is another man's, who shall give you that which is your own? Keep the two scriptures at the back of your mind. Saul, the king, had become a king on a platter of gold, just to say. He was just seeking for his father's lost asses, and he came across Samuel, and Samuel pronounced him the king of Israel. So he got to the throne quite easily. No wonder, they say, nothing good comes easy. David fought wars, and he remained a soldier till he died. Solomon, his son, did not fight anywhere, was just busy enjoying and he lost the kingdom. Nothing good comes easy. God gave instruction to Saul. The instructions were very clear. He said, destroy the Amalekites. Children, adults, women, men, cattle, destroy everything. He disobeyed the Lord. And now he's in trouble with the Almighty. An evil spirit is now troubling him. It's like whenever that spirit comes upon him, a whole king will be like a madman. It didn't start like that. The demon was able to get into him through the doorway of disobedience. And so people in the palace were concerned. How can the king be behaving like this? So the people began to give their opinion. At last, they agreed that the instrument of deliverance that was needed was music. The next problem was getting the right musician to be used. The right musician. A musician whose music possesses the power of deliverance. A musician whose music can bring forth the power of God to effect deliverance must be identified and must be invited. Then the servants were discussing, where do we find somebody? The one servant, one person in the king's palace spoke about a little shepherd boy in the bush. David in the bush never knew that he had become a topic in the king's palace. This servant spoke about the boy that was in the bush. A boy in the bush whose father would not have voted for if they said they should make him a governor. So an unsolicited servant in the palace spoke up for David in the palace. This voice, this voice of this servant was the voice that prepared the passage of David to the throne. God is awesome and God is wonderful. You do not need the voice of a VIP to bring you to your place of breakthrough. The voice that will bring you your greatest blessing may be the voice of an ordinary servant. A servant, a messenger, a clerk, a housemaid, a houseboy may hold your key into your place of glory. God can, because of you, go and plant a servant in the high places to be a voice for you when your day comes. David had never been to the palace. David had no way of getting there. If people were to be taken to the palace, his seven brothers would come first. They would forget him again in the desert place. David had no promoter. David had no long leg. David had no godfather. He didn't have any, any VIP man to showcase him before the king. Even though he had the answer to the crisis that was in the palace, but nobody was going to take him there. It was the solution, but no one is willing to bring him to confront the problem. One of the greatest tragedies in life is for you to be a solution, but they kept you in the cooler where you cannot even confront the problem that will showcase you. But there was a voice that spoke for him. A voice that God arranged to speak for him before the king when the season came for God to lift him up. Ah, this is serious. How was David going to be needed there? That was God's agenda. How was he going to be there? That's the divine agenda. God put upon the king a problem whose solution was in the pocket of David. David, a boy despised by the majority, a young boy whose strategic potential even his own household could not acknowledge. His strategic potentials were blind to the members of his household. But there was a servant in the king's palace who said, I have seen a son of Jesse. I'm sure David did not know that servant. I'm sure David did not even know that he was being carefully washed. 
He didn't know that all those were playing of the harp and what he was doing in the desert place, some people were carefully observing him. That's why, beloved, we must be very, very careful what we do and be very careful where you do it. There may be an observing eye that will report you later, whether in your favor or against you. May God raise a voice for you in the day of adversity. May God raise a voice for you when you desperately need promotion. <laughs> if you understand this prayer, your amen will climb to the third heavens. <laughs> May God raise a voice for you when negative voices want to pull you down. May God raise a voice for you where your promotion is being decided. May God raise a voice for you when other voices are negative. May strangers raise voices to support you where you have no supporter. Let your email roar like thunder. Let it roar like thunder. In the name of Jesus. Listen, beloved. The little things you do, do it very well you may not realize that somebody somewhere is watching you. And that person will be in a position one day to raise a voice to support you or to raise a voice against you. Do the little things you do very well. Do them so well that your work will speak for you, even in the palace. Do them so well that people will jump over the big, big ones and the eloquent one, and they will come and look for you. Do it so well that people will abandon the glamorous and the big places. They'll come to you where you are. There is someone cooking some food in a Kedja area. People will abandon the big, big hotels around to go and eat in a place. Simply because the small things she's doing, she's doing it so well. Unfortunately, many have shut the doors of greatness against themselves because they, they wanted big occasion to showcase themselves. So, ah, so you can sing? Hey, yes. It's okay. Uh, follow us to the crusade at Jankara Market and come and sing there. No, no. Uh, no. How many people will listen to me there? When, when there is a stadium crusade, that's when to invite me. Many shut the door of greatness against themselves like that because they wanted massive occasion to showcase themselves. When you never do little things well, you lose your chance to become great. Are you a cleaner? Clean it well. Are you an electrician? Do it well. You're a carpenter. Do it so well. You're a singer. Then sing it well. You're a barber. Then bab it well. There are three major laws of success that nobody can kick aside. Three major laws of success that nobody can kick aside. I know there are many people that God is speaking to tonight. Those who have decided to be great. Those are the people this message is meant for. Those who decided that, yes, I must be great. Those are the ones that this sermon is for. I decree once again that where there is no voice to elevate you, God shall raise a voice. 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 In the name of Jesus. Let your amen roll like thunder. Law number one. Every man created by God is a solution to an existing problem. Every man created by God is a solution to an existing problem. Meaning that if you are the solution to a problem, but nobody brings you to the problem, you die unfulfilled. If you are the solution to the problem, but you die before you even confront the problem, then you don't fulfill your destiny. One man in one big nation was flying small, small aircraft, was doing well. After some time, they recommended him to the president. He should be flying president. This man had flight thousands and thousands of hours, no problem. No problem at all. Ex excellent pilot. Excellent pilot. 
But the first day he will enter the president's plane was the first day in his life he made the first mistake. And he could not get the plane to land on time. And the president was running high blood pressure inside the plane because the man said the plane could not land again. Only because he forgot to do a small thing. It was the solution to a problem. But the enemy followed him there. When he eventually landed the plane, the president said they should just, please, that man over there, don't, don't just take him away. Please, I beg you, don't let him move close to this place again. I pray that any agenda of follow, follow spirit to bind you from becoming a solution will be destroyed tonight. Will be destroyed tonight. Will be destroyed tonight. Let your amen roar like thunder in the name of Jesus. That's the first law. Every man created by God is a solution to an existing problem. Law number two. The road to greatness in any line, any line, is to make yourself master of that line. The road to greatness in any line is to make yourself master of that line. Become a master of that line. That's the road to greatness in that line. That is, whatever you do, master it excellently well. Law number three says this. If you can do something better than anyone else, if you can do something better than anyone else, no matter where you live, people will look for you. It's a law of success. If you can do something better than everyone else, no matter where you live, people will look for you. Study these three laws very well. Study these three laws very well. This is sometimes why people open shops to be working. Somebody is busy catching fly. Another one is busy working until he's turning away customers. You call yourself a professional man. They brought the first car. You say you repaired it. The man drove off. His engine fell down from inside the car. And he was driving the car away without the engine. And you were the one that repaired it. He will not come back to you. He will go to somebody else. And then you say, I want to do deliverance. It's not deliverance. Whatever you want to do, do it diligently well. A little person who is diligent will not remain small. But will sooner or later become great. It is possible that right now God has made you an apprentice under somebody. That your apprenticeship is your gateway into your future. Whether of greatness or smallness. If you are the kind, I will work hard when I begin my own. I will work hard when I begin my own. So if you are an apprentice somewhere and you are stealing your boss's money or you are taking things away you ought not to take away, you are shutting the door of greatness against yourself. A man will never increase if you reject your starting point of little. The seed of your future is in your present life now. Now. Your future greatness is in the little you have now. The man who despises what he has because he thinks it's not much will lose even what he has. So anybody who wants to be great, begin to be diligent in the little you are doing now. You wish to become your own master in future? Then be a faithful servant to the person you are serving now. If while you are serving there, you refuse to be faithful, you will close the doors of greatness against yourself. This is an important point I need to make clear to you tonight. Your good work will compel men and women to look for you in your shop, in your house, or in the kiosk, or in the back street of nowhere. This is a serious matter, and you need to understand it. Do your work so well that it will speak so loudly for you that people will bypass the big names. They will bypass those that think they are important and they will seek you out at the little corner you are at the end of the town. But when you say you are a tailor, you are always spoiling people's clothes. Or you will cut some of it and keep. And you refuse to sew this thing, you are hiding it. Every time they are fighting at the front of your shop, ole, ole, oji, 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 oji. You are shutting the door of greatness against yourself. Wherever you are, where you are, is all you need to get to where you are going. So use it well now. 
You may not be appreciated by your family, but in your season, God will send strangers to speak for you and to look for you. This is the story of David. He was in the backside of the desert. But God wanted him on that road. There was a servant in the palace who said, I see a son of Jesse. God put a voice in that palace to speak for David. And that voice said, I see a son of Jesse. And miraculously, all other voices had no other examples, no alternative. Nobody said, I know another one. I know, I know, I know Joachim. I know Zechariah somewhere. Kept quiet. Because that voice that spoke was God that raised it. The voice that will promote your life shall be raised by the God of Elijah. It shall be raised by the God of Elijah. It shall be raised. 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 It shall be raised in the name of Jesus. And eventually, Samuel got to the house of Jesse. As I bring your children here, God said one of them is the king of Israel. Mom brought all the big, big brothers. They're not these ones. But when Samuel himself saw Eliab, he said, surely the Lord anointed this before him. The Lord said, no. Look not on his stature. I've rejected it. And I said, do you have another son? Oh, yeah. I that small boy watching the sheep. Samuel said, go and bring him hither. We shall not sit down till he comes. Oh. So they remain standing. David's father, Samuel, his brothers, they remain at attention until David showed up. May God keep men standing to honor you. Your yeah, amen is weak. <laughs> May those who have planned to consign you to the back be made to celebrate with you. In the name of Jesus. David never had to lobby the king for a place in the palace. David never had to. It is these days that ladies will say, I'm looking for a job. Say, you want a job? Lie down on this couch. And the man is sleeping with you in his office. Because you want a job. The job you got by opening your legs wide will disappear through that leg too. I want a contract. Well, you got a contract, but it's not free of charge. Meet me in one hotel. So, but I will, I, I will come when it is dark. I don't want anybody to see me from our church. The money you make like that, the Bible calls it the money of a whore. You don't bring it even to the house of God. Because you get into more trouble with the Almighty. David had nobody to converse for him there. God raised men. He raised a man who advertised him in the right place. May God raise men to advertise you. In the name of Jesus. The mark you got from your lecturer in class to pass after he has slept with you, you cannot prosper with that certificate because it's a certificate of fornication. There are so many such people, when they come up with that certificate, they can't work with it. Because the foundation of it is wrong. It is better to die as a pauper than for you to sell your body to get anything. I pray once again. May God raise the voice that will vindicate you. I pray once again that the malice of your household will not chain you down. I want you to understand this very well. So sometimes it's, all trouble is not trouble. Not all trouble is bad trouble. Some troubles are good trouble because it is the raw material for your promotion. When the Almighty sends you good trouble, the good trouble will lift you from the obscurity to limelight. May God send a parcel of problems to a king for which they will seek you for solution. In the name of Jesus. If you are understanding me tonight, let your amen roar like thunder.
So it's not how much of the things you are doing, but how well you are doing it. The few things you do well speak more loudly for you than the many things you do anyhow. Excellence opens doors to greater glories. Where you are is not as important as whether or not God is there. Whether God is there with you. When God is with you where you are, kings will come and look for you in the prison. They will come and look for you where you are. There is no wilderness that can conceal a man that God wants to advertise. People may run ahead of you and pray and behave as if they are the best. But God has this ability of taking from the back to the front. That is why I say promotion coming neither from the east or from the west or from the south. The lamentation of these days is this. There are many, unfortunately, who focus on nothing. Focus on nothing. David could play the harp skillfully, cunningly well. That harp that he was playing, he was playing it while looking after the sheep. It's possible for somebody to just say, well, everybody in the family, they are enjoying. It's only me, they put here to be looking at that sheep. And you get depressed, you get unhappy, and you are complaining. It's because my mother is this. It's because this is that. And that's why they abandoned me here. And you live your life in unnecessary sorrow. But instead of wasting time or engaging his life in sorrow, thinking, unnecessary, unnecessary thinking, melancholy, he sat down and practiced on his heart. The day he took up that harp and began to practice while he was watching his hip, he didn't know that the instrument he had in his hand was going to take him to the palace. There are many who focus on nothing. When you are everything, you become nothing. Some do plenty and plenty of things, but are skillful in nothing. Go and read the history of great people. Most great people are those who focus on just one thing. One thing. If we say Maradona now, everybody will say football. If we say Muhammad Ali, everybody will say boxing. If we say Pele, your mind goes straight to football. You mention Bill Gates, everybody goes to computer. So most great people are people just focus. Jesus too said, I must do the works of my father when it is day. The night cometh when no man can walk. And when his parents were busy searching for him and they couldn't find him on the journey to Jerusalem and they find him bombarding the priest with questions and answering their questions. I said, but we have been looking for you for some time. Where did you go? I said, don't you know that I will be about my father's business? Focus. Paul said, this one thing I do, forgetting those things that are behind. So I focus on what's at the front. One aspect of human life in which the enemy has worked so hard is focus. Many people have no focus for their lives. Focus is the central point. Focus is the center of interest. Focus is what you pay close and undivided attention to. Focus is what you concentrate on. Your focus is your vision, is your purpose, is your direction. Your focus is the dedication to what God has for your life. That's why somebody has said, if you do not have a focus in life, you can never be a focus. Yorubas, our ancient fathers who don't even read the Bible, they say, if you chase two rats, you will catch none. So the more you focus, the larger, bigger, and more successful your life will become. You are not called to do everything but something. If you fail to stand for something, you will fall for anything. There is something you can do that nobody else can do like you. And that your focus is the door to your breakthrough. Your location is irrelevant, provided you locate that your location. And when you have focus, your focus will give focus to others. The world will stand aside and let you pass, and let you pass because you know where you are going. And the way the Almighty oppresses this, God is only committed to what he has commanded you to do. So when you have no focus, it's like a person is buying spectacles but he doesn't have eyes. That focus will keep you. It will challenge you. But when you are not focused, just exist but you will not live, the person will be thrown here and there by the storms of life and your life will make no impact at all. David 
was a man of focus. And those are the things that God looks at and then begins to raise voices for you. I want you to understand that the key to greatness is in your hand now, depending on what you do with it. James and John, they wanted position. They told Jesus, I know your kingdom, I want to sit at the right hand, my brother will sit at the left hand. They want a position. But you see, you don't seek for office. Office seeks for you. When you are busy chasing and chasing and chasing and chasing, and you leave God out of your calculation, then you get into trouble. That's why Jesus said, greatness comes by serving. And then things begin to happen. And there is no greatness that does not involve sacrifice. For Moses to become the leader in Israel, he had to give up the treasures of Egypt. If you want to become a true man of God now, you have to forsake everything that is worldly. I want you to understand this. That as far as you are a child of God and you are born again, you are in the image of the master. And then the almighty will push you and move you forward. How do you get God to raise a voice for you at the due season? Number one, you must know your God. Know your God. They that know their God shall be great and they shall do exploits. Two, you must know your enemy. Know that the devil is a liar and the father of lies. Number three, you must desire to be the best God can make of you. Desire to be the best God can make of you. Number four, you must live a holy life. You must live a holy life. Number five, don't give up because of failure and setback. Don't give up because of failure and setbacks. And lastly, work on yourself. You are your greatest asset or you are your greatest deficit. Work on yourself. Aim beyond what you are capable of doing now. Try and do things you are incapable of. Work hard, be energetic. These are things that will make God to raise a voice for you when the time comes. I decree that tonight, where you are seated there, by the bulldozing power of the Almighty, every obstacle on your way of greatness shall die. And I decree that whether it is convenient for the enemy or not, God shall raise a voice for you. He 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 shall raise a voice for you. As you are sitting down there, you have placed your hand on the program of failure. The Lord will take off your hands. In the name of Jesus, I decree that the vulture of your father's house, planning to devour your destiny, shall die. In the name of Jesus, the oil of greatness assigned to your head from heaven will not run dry. In the name of Jesus, I decree upon your life that the son of your life shall not listen to the voice of witchcraft. The son of your life shall arise and shine. Shall arise and shine. In the name of Jesus.